Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jennifer and I would love for you to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Today I want to show you everything that I wear snowboarding. Last weekend my husband and I went on a little birthday ski trip to Idaho. I had a few new pieces that I went snowboarding with for the first time and I think it just completely freaking changed the game. I want to start from inner layer to outer layer and just kind of show you everything that I like to wear. For my base layer, I really like to keep it sort of thin, really stretchy, super comfortable pair of leggings. These ones specifically are more of a cotton material, so I wouldn't wear this exact one. The one I normally wear is actually in the washer, so I can't show you right now, but it's just a dry fit kind of wicking material. For tops, I normally wear something like this. So this one is from Helly Hansen, but I actually got it from Goodwill. This is just a dry fit wicking kind of workout material. That's great if it gets wet or you sweat and it'll just, it'll keep you warmer. Layering is the key for any winter activity. I would rather be colder and be able to put on layers than to be sweating and literally feel sweat dripping down my back. So this is another piece that I got from Goodwill. Again, I think this was like five bucks. Nice down vest in case it is a little bit warmer or if we go to the mountain and the sun is out and it's just more of a higher temperature than normal. If we are going to the mountain and it's already freezing, it's currently snowing, maybe it's sleeting on the way there, maybe it's super windy, I would choose to wear something like this. So I really like pieces with thumb holes, especially because it's just another layer between you and the snow when you put your gloves on because this is connected to the jacket. So you're probably not going to get snow in your sleeve. But this one is extra warm. This is full down and it's by Columbia and it has this Omni heats kind of reflective material. I don't really really know if this does anything really. I do know that it's super, super warm and it has nice zipper pockets for chapstick, a tissue, a um, piece of cloth. Sometimes I bring like a tissue because windshield makes you runny or you can bring like a microfiber kind of cloth in case it starts to sleet or snow when you're up at the very top just to clean off your goggles um, or just chapstick because I don't know about you, but my lips get super, super chapped whenever I snowboard and it just, I look like a mess. Also, it's great for your phone. It's great for your wallet. Um, yeah, zipper pockets are key when you are snowboarding, unless you bring a backpack. I have two snowboarding pants, one which I favor and then one which is just my oldest pair. These are more of a wide leg, kind of slouchy boyfriend fit, I guess you could say. So you can wear thicker sweatpants underneath if it's really extra cold. And then these ones are by Columbia and they have the Omni Heat thing on the inside as well. These ones are my favorite just because they're more slimmer. I just feel like if everything was loose fitting or boyfriend fit, then I would just look like a freaking marshmallow coming down the mountain. So I need something to be somewhat slimming. Your jacket and your snowboarding pants are just your key items that you're going to be using over and over and over again. So I definitely recommend getting a snowboarding jacket. And it's very different from normal jackets. It has this layer at the bottom that you can kind of buckle in so it's tighter around your waist. I've tried other jackets that didn't have this and whenever you fall or you're just laying down in the snow, it's so much easier for the snow to get into your pants or to down your lower back. Having this extra little waist strap thing really helps to minimize the snow. This one's also great because it has a bunch of zipper pockets. Again, zipper pockets are a freaking must when you're on the mountain. If you've never gone snowboarding or skiing or if you've never been at the top of a mountain, you might not think that you would get hot and you might not think that you sweat. But the last time I went, I was going through heat flashes. I'd be sweating going down the mountain and then I'd get on the ski lift and then I'd be freezing. So I constantly had to like change up what I was doing, changing up my vents and everything. So these actually have armpit vents, which are great. Definitely recommend those. Now to get into the accessories. I guess I can talk about the boring ones first and save the best for last. These are my socks. They are by the brand Roxy. These are my first pair I've ever owned. They're the only snowboarding socks I've ever owned. Um, they're super, super thick. They have more support in, you can't really see that. These stretch, my feet aren't that small. Look how tiny. 
but these are really thick, they're really comfortable. These stretch all the way up to my knee, so it's well above the boot. If you don't wanna buy snowboarding specific socks, then just make sure that you're wearing socks that are going to be above your boot. Otherwise, it can just get all bunched up under your boot, making it really uncomfortable. These are still wet. I wore these a week ago. These did not air dry. I wear two gloves when I, this is gross, I'm sorry. This. I actually wear two gloves when I go snowboarding. These are my inner layer and I wear these pretty much all the time. They're just a nice thin layer. It's the tip of the index finger and the thumb, it has that, I don't know what kind of technology it's called, but you can actually use your phone or you can use your camera, touch screens, so you don't actually have to take your gloves off. These are fully cotton, not weatherproof at all. I just specifically really like this for taking my phone out or taking my camera out or stuff like that. And then I put these ones on. These are actual waterproof gloves. They're insulated. And when you're choosing your glove, make sure it comes with this little strap. So whenever you're on the ski lift and you wanna take these gloves off, so you can take a picture, you're not going to lose your gloves because if you lose your gloves, that's just gonna be a horrible, horrible time. Yeah, they're just like basic gloves, but the most important part is this little strap. You gotta have the strap. And you gotta wash them when you're done and make sure they're dry. I washed them. I did not properly dry them. Next piece is this little, what are these called? I guess it's a neck scarf. This style is really great because if you wear a long scarf, then it's constantly going to be moving around and it's gonna be really, really uncomfortable. I've also tried a full balaclava that is really tight to your face, but I just felt that whenever I wear a balaclava, balaclava, balaclava. Whenever I wear a balaclava, I get really, really hot and it feels uncomfortable because it's like really tight to my face. It's not gonna go anywhere like down. I don't have to readjust it. But if I'm on the ski lift, I can just kind of tuck it like this and it's blocking the wind from my face, but it's really comfortable and easy to like move out of the way. The great thing about this, if you head over to Old Navy, I got this recently and I got it for 97 cents. I got this one and I got a black one. A few more pieces. I'm gonna talk about my boots last because I'm very excited about that. These are my goggles. Y'all know if you've been around, I love Mars Quest. But this past winter season, they came out with goggles. Not only do I love how they look, I love how they fit. I thought something was always wrong with my face shape because every pair of goggles that I ever put on just smushed my nose and I couldn't breathe right. But these ones fit perfectly. They are anti-scratch, anti-fog, super, super cute, super comfortable. They're $50, which that's super affordable for goggles and they're just really great quality. They have two different styles and like four colors total between them all. So I will have everything linked down below and I believe I have a code. I don't know what it is or for how much it is because I forget. I wanna say it's for 15% off. I will find the code and I will have everything linked down below that I'm talking about. And if I can't find what I'm talking about, I will have something similar. All the links will be below. So the goggles are great, obviously, for when you're going down the mountain, physically snowboarding. But when you take a quick break and you stop at the ski lodge and you take your goggles off, it is so, so bright. So I really like to bring some sunglasses. And again, these are Mars Quest. These are the Momentum and a couple, I think this was the first video that I made with them, but these are the unbreakable kind. You can run them over with your car. I threw them off a nine story building. They were great. If they do break, then you can just pop them off. There's no actual like metal hinges. Um, the lenses pop back in place. What's great about this for when you're snowboarding is because you can just put them in your pocket and you don't have to worry about having a case for them so it's not bulky and you don't have to worry about them getting crushed because they're unbreakable, which I really, really like. For the first time that I've ever gone snowboarding, I wore a helmet. Normally, I just wear a beanie and I have my goggles and that was just always the most uncomfortable thing and reasons why I hated wearing a beanie instead of this, even though I've just only used this one time, because if it starts to snow and you're wearing a beanie, most of beanies are all cotton and it's just gonna soak it up and it's going to be heavier, it's gonna be wet, it's gonna keep you cold. So let's just pretend I'm wearing a beanie right now. If I'm sitting on a ski lift and I want to take these off, 
um, because sometimes I do. I don't like to have these on my face at every, every single second that I'm on the mountain. Sometimes I like to take them off. Whenever I take them off and I put them on my head like this, it moves my beanie. And I have to readjust my beanie, then I have to readjust my goggles, and then I have to take my gloves off so I can readjust it because I can't readjust it with my big heavy gloves and it just gets so annoying. I actually got this at Costco. It's really nice. It has vents in here so you can close it when you're cold, open it when you're hot. It's really nice. Because this has a little hook in the back, I can put these up on my helmet. I don't have to worry about them falling off or getting lost. I've actually never fallen and hit my head um, to the point where I was like, man, I wish I was wearing a helmet. So I don't wear a helmet for the purposes of head trauma, which, I mean, you should. But it's just for the fact that it's just so comfortable and it keeps you nice and warm. Oh, love it. I have been snowboarding since I was 19. Not very much, but I have been snowboarding and owned a snowboard and my boots and my bindings since I was 19. That's eight years. I'm 27. I just turned 27. I feel old, but I originally bought my board, boots, and binding kind of on a whim. I think I wind up went snowboarding twice and rented it, and I was like, you know what? I want to buy my own board, my own boots. Me and a friend went to Zoomies, dropped like $400, got like the most basic board, the most basic bindings, the most basic boots, and I had no idea what I was doing. I knew how long the snowboard should be, but that's pretty much it. I didn't know if I was regular or if I was goofy. I didn't know what size boot I was. It took me eight years, eight years to realize, maybe I should change my boots and my bindings. I mentioned earlier that I went snowboarding last weekend for my birthday and my husband got me some new boots that I will show you in a second, but he also adjusted my bindings, basically, my bindings were not right. They were not comfortable. And then my husband asked, maybe we should make them equal. So he changed them. So my bindings went from a 45 degree and straight to 45 and 45. Mine freaking blown because I was able to use my left foot and my right foot and didn't feel awkward. Also, I had espresso, so I feel like it's kicking in because I'm starting to talk faster. My shoe size is six and a half or seven on like every single shoe that I own. So why did I decide to buy size eight boots? I have no clue. Why did it take me eight years to realize that they're too big? I don't know. So I went down a full boot size. These are my favorite style. These are how my old boots are. It has this like little turny thing. It has a little lock. So when you tighten the inner layer, you can actually lock it and really make it nice and tight. And I really love these wires. I forget the style that it's called, but twist it and it tightens it via wire. I've tried boots that are laced up whenever I rented them and I don't really like them, so I definitely preferred this. The biggest difference of changing the degree of your bindings to what's comfortable and getting a boot that fit literally went from me moving like a freaking turtle down the mountain, only on my heel, only with my left foot down the mountain, to carving. I was carving and I was so happy. I have wanted to go from heel to toe, heel to toe forever. For my old boots that were a size eight, every single time that I would try to go on my toe, I could feel my heel lift out of my boot like a good two inches. Why did that not occur to me that they were too big? I have no idea but they would lift up out of my boot and I feel very unstable so I never wanted to be on my toe. When I have a boot that fits, I can go on my toe and my heel doesn't move. And it is so much better. I magically got a million times better, a million times faster to the point where I was like screaming down the mountain, too fast, too fast, because I was going too fast. And I was like, whoa. And even my husband's like, you're actually good. You're actually fast. You're not a snail. That is everything that I have to show you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button down below. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.